the Bible says that Jesus himself, our Lord, said that there is no man born of a woman that is greater than John as far as the old dispensation is concerned. The greatest man had God and he doubted. The one he was speaking about when he saw him said, Behold the Lamb of God before he had a voice. It is easy for you to believe when it is in the scope of your control. Good. But when God begins to unravel things that are to come, I'm teaching. Come on. Teach that. You're teaching. It is the moment that doubt starts to creep in. Yes. Him knowing this is my cousin. He already knew who the Lamb of God was. He just wasn't saying it. He knew. His mother knew. The family knew. So when he saw Jesus, he already reacted. Behold the Lamb. He didn't hear a voice from heaven. But the moment a voice from heaven came, when he went to prison, he did not question if they were relatives. He forgot about everything he was told when he was growing up. He began to say, my guy, are you really the one? Or should we wait for another? But remember, before he was arrested, Jesus was also baptizing at the Jordan. On the other side, Jesus was performing miracles. He never doubted. He told his disciples, follow him. The moment he was arrested, everything that God said went out the window. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> so the question is this. If a mighty prophet of God believed in himself that this was the Christ, but when heaven opened, he began to doubt, yet he had God. How do we know that he had God? If you read the verse, it tells you. This is my beloved son. God was talking to him. It means Jesus never heard that because the message wasn't to Jesus. If it was to Jesus, he would say, you are my beloved son. That's good. Teaching good. That's good. So the message wasn't to Jesus. So Jesus never had a voice. Yeah. Jesus just saw the Holy Spirit descending. But the one who had the voice was John who was looking. Can I be real with you? Sometimes hearing God will put you more in doubt than in faith. Ah, uh, look. <laughs> uh, because when God begins to reveal things, That's right. and when God speaks, He does not deal with you according to where you are. So if you're looking for validation of your present circumstances, God will not validate them. Because God is already in your future. Amen. So he will show you your destiny and your future. Yes. Amen. Yes. But he's not going to show you where you are. To him where you are is irrelevant because you are only going through it. Yes. Some of you when the lightning and the flash comes, yeah. you want him to address where you are. But God does not deal with where you are. Yeah. That is already old news to him. Come on. The devil wants to deal with your past and where you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he knows that is the only way he can keep you there. Yes. But for God to remove you from where you are, yeah. God must show you beyond where... Amen. Amen. God will show you on the other side. Yes. He will not deal with where you are. That is why when he addresses you, you ask yourself, God, why are you showing me things that I can't get? That in your spirit you start now arguing with yourself. Lord, how can you tell me? 
I will be this. But when I look at me now, there is nothing in me that can achieve where you're taking me. The point is this. We do not move by what? Sight. That is why God is showing you a flash. So that what you see becomes mental. You have a map that is... Amen, amen. What you're moving is, is with a vision. You see, the realm of visions is not just open vision like some of us see when we are prophesying. It is not in that way, always. It is always in glimpse. That's why the Bible says we know in part. But if you look at Elisha's and the Elijah's and them, when they spoke to you, they didn't speak like they were knowing in part. They seem to know way too much detail than in part. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Now the question is this. When you saw the flash, what did you do? Some of you, even in your own prayer time, it has come to you, but you got distracted. You are praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, something flashed, you open your eyes, say, I rebuke, I bind. God was about to show you something. Then you started looking, is my window open? Maybe a car passed. There was no car. God was trying to get your attention to something. You are shaken out of attention. Because you did not stay calm. You did not keep watching. So now the question is this. Did you catch the flash? Or are you waiting for a voice that will say, You are blessed. Bless, 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 bless. You shall increase, 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 increase. Mufasa, <laughs> Simba. It doesn't work like that. Because God doesn't want to bring the devil's attention to you. God always wants you to be ahead of what the enemy is doing. So when God speaks to you, he will speak in what is called dark speeches. Touch your neighbor, say dark speeches. Dark speeches. I can't hear you. Dark speeches. I can't hear you. Dark speeches. A dark speech means a language that has to be decoded. Musa, can you find that in numbers for me quickly? Numbers. In the book of numbers quickly. So there is something called dark speeches. Meaning if you are among people, because you have to remember this. When you are among people... When God speaks, he doesn't only speak to you. His voice will be heard with, by everyone who has the ability to hear. But because it is in the realm of dark speech, only those who know the dark speech language are the ones that are going to hear it. Amen, amen. I don't think you understood what I'm saying. Numbers chapter 12 verse 8. I, the Lord, will make myself known. There's a reason why God is saying, I will make myself known. Not just speak. Come on. Come on. Because I can speak to you, but I don't make myself known to you. Yes. Amen. Words have meaning. Yes. That's right. I will make myself known. Because when God reveals himself, he just doesn't speak to you. That's right. He will make you to know who he is by the encounter that you have. And he said, hear now my words. If they be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Verse 8. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. Meaning everything that he said, visions and dreams, dark speeches. Mm. You need interpretation. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, did I break your heart? I'm sorry. 
There is no vision that doesn't need interpretation. This is why a lot of people are making mistakes, especially the ministers of, of the internet. TikTok, bishops and apostles. That is their error. They think everything you dream, it means that's what God said. Yeah. The Bible says Moses had a nightmare. But the interpretation of what Moses saw was not the devil. It was God himself trying to kill him. Because of him not circumcising his son. Abraham just comes from having a conversation with God. Offers an offering before God. The Bible says and he had a nightmare. A bad dream. But the bad dream wasn't the devil. It was God communicating something to Abraham. So when somebody dreams something, their idea is what I dreamt is what God... No, 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 no. You need interpretation. It's called dark speech. That is why everyone can dream. It is not special. Dreaming a dream is different from just having a dream. Dreaming a dream is the realm that you decide to enter into the place of dreaming in order to have a conversation with God. If you look at Daniel and his friends when the king wanted to kill all the wise men, within the first night, God came and spoke to him and revealed to him the dream and even the interpretation. And he came out of it and said, Father, I thank you who gives dreams and knows all things and you have chosen to reveal it to your servant. But if you look at the dream, it doesn't tell you what he dreamt. It just tells you that he got the meaning in the, in the night. That is why it says, your elders shall dream dreams. Because that is the realm of seasoned people. Amen. The word elder there doesn't mean old in terms of age. Yeah. It's talking about being seasoned. Yeah. All these are realms of dark speeches because they need interpretation. God sends a message to Daniel. Daniel, who was a master interpreter, the Bible says not only was he able to interpret dreams, dreams divinely, but he also had the skill. He had mastery. He had understanding on how to do this. God spoke to him. He had no meaning. Gabriel had to come from heaven to explain to him what he had seen. The Bible says it clearly. Gabriel says, I have come because of your words and I've come to show you the interpretations of what you had seen. So if prophets like Daniel need interpretation, so people who have no experience spiritually, they will just rumble their dreams thinking that what they are saying is right, yet they are completely wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why you find the grace to interpret dreams is actually a gift. It needs skill and mastery. Not because you pull parallels from this one and that one. You give it some spin of meaning. No, you can't even find interpretation in the Bible. You need to be seasoned in the realm of the spirit to know what they mean. So when God gives you these flashes, they are dark speech. That it will take you to be seasoned in a certain way for you to capture and to receive what the Lord is saying. How many of you are sitting here? You're wondering, Lord, what do I do tomorrow? How do I go about it? How will this door be opened? How will this change? How will this come to pass? I promise you God showed you. The Lord Jesus said, no parent can ask a child, no, no, no child can ask a parent for a fish and he gives them a snake or ask for bread and he gives them a rock. How much more for God? Hmm, let's look at one more passage. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. 
when the disciples came back excited, they came back excited, saying, Lord, even the devils were subject unto us. The Lord Jesus gave a very funny response. This is what he said. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. <laughs> they said, even demons are subject unto us. He says, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. Verse 19. <laughs> Behold, I give unto you power. Ah. What are you talking about, Lord? We are telling you demons are subject to us. Your response is, uh, relax. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and upon, on, over all the powers in the, of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, rejoice in this. That the spirits that rejoice not in this, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice your names are written in heaven. Yeah. Notice, you're still not getting what Jesus is talking about. Jesus was not speaking about the heaven. Jesus was talking about heavenly places. I sent you two by two because I kicked him down already. And I gave you power over him and over all his hosts. When you went there, you are thinking it was just you because you could not see what happened like a flash. Come on. So you are boasting, thinking that you did something. No. Where I am, I pulled him down and I gave you power. Teacher, good. So good. So the whole time they are crediting themselves. They didn't know from where Jesus was, he already pulled him down. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> And while they were pulled down, their names were already registered in a realm in the spirit. That these ones, whatever they say, no demon can resist. Amen. The reason why you are struggling with spiritual warfare, you have not seen the flash that has happened concerning you. So while you're busy binding and crying and binding and crying, you're wondering why the problem is not ending. Because the devil fell a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You are beating a dead horse. Your destiny has already been revealed. Yes. But because you want the scope of what you can control, you keep fighting the fight you can understand that has already been won. Teach. There is nothing more to fight, but you miss the flash that revealed your future. You missed it. Some of you, God told you, go and invest in this. You feared. God said, go and do this. He came to you. I just know I'm supposed to do this. There's a certain level of faith that came. A certain level of understanding came. Because when God speaks, confidence comes. But if you don't cultivate and step into it, just like that image, it will fade. And when it fades, the grace also goes. That thing has to be rekindled again. And God has to speak again. Because the word came and he did what he needed to do and it left. But did you benefit from what the word came to do? That becomes now the question. That becomes the question. When the year was beginning, you had a lot of flashes of your ear. This is my ear. This year I'm going to do this. This year I'm going to do that. A little challenge arose. You lost the whole flash of the whole year. It just became another year that you're hoping for the next year to be better. Can somebody hear me? Yes. If you can hear me, wave your hands, please. Let me recognize that you can hear me. Overflow, wave your hands if you can hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's now where the problem is. Is your sight sharpened by God? Is your sight sharpened by the Holy Spirit? 
Have you stayed in a place whereby every movement that God makes, you can catch it? You can be aware of it. You can recognize it. You can pick it up. Are you sensitive enough or are you distracted? Some of you, the issue is you're distracted. Some of you, it's the fact that you see it and you fear the greatness of what is ahead of you. And you step back. I don't think that is for me. And as a result, you miss everything that God ordained for you. When God speaks, he does not make a scene. When God speaks, he never makes a scene. God does everything in calm. The only thing he will try to do is to get your attention. Are you hearing me, woman of? Yes. Are you hearing me, men and women? There is something he would do to just get your attention. If Moses was not caught by the burning bush, he would have never heard God. God was already calling unto him, but the first step was to catch his attention. When he caught the attention and he wanted to see it, he heard the voice, Moses. The voice was always where he was caught. Be tired of missing God. Amen. 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 Especially those who are clapping. Be tired of missing God. When God reveals to you your future and your destiny, it does not actually scientifically logically make any kind of sense. It will put you... <laughs> Let's finish the message, please. It will put you in a situation whereby you will even doubt if you are Christian. Ah, God, are you tempting me? What is this you are showing me to do? When the Lord showed me a lot of things to do, not only just with what we are doing now, before this, and other things that God ever showed me to do, had never made any kind of sense. The only thing I had to do was, what I have seen, I will go after it. I'm not the one who is going to get embarrassed. He will. He's the one who spoke. So if it fails, it's his fault, not mine. I'm going to give it 100% of what he told me to do. Amen. If it is his will, it's his bill. Amen. If he makes me look crazy, no, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. So I will go after what he shows me, not because it will be up to me. It will be up to him. Unless you take the first step, nothing else is going to happen. Acromia happens to you all the time. I just had this brilliant idea. I think I, I'm not sure. God spoke and you missed it. The moment you commit to go after it, something happens. Matthew 28 from verse 2. Matthew 28 from verse 2. Matthew 28 from verse 2. When the women were ready to go and embalm Jesus' body, because his body was not prepared for burial, and reason being is that God did not allow Jesus' body to be prepared because Jesus was not dying. Mm -hmm. He was going to come out of the grave. If they prepared his body, then he would have been sentenced to death. I don't know if you're understanding. The only preparation was when the woman came and poured oil at his feet and cried at his feet. And everybody looked at Jesus like, how could he let this woman, this kind of woman, touch him? Jesus said, you have no idea what this girl just did. She just prepared me for my burial. You have to remember, a harlot represents the church. 
before Jesus came for her. We had gone away from God. So her coming to repent at his feet was not just a representation of her. It was a representation of us. She's the one who stamped Jesus to go to the grave. Jesus said, she has prepared me. She has prepared me for the grave. Jesus is buried. They had to wrap him up and throw him in the grave because the Sabbath was coming. Either they bury him now or he remains on the cross. And they cannot embalm him because they have to come after three days. Then they can go through it. But you have to remember by then he would have decomposed. He was smelling. So they were coming asking themselves, how will we get to his body? Because also the Romans had put a rock in front of the tomb to make sure nobody steals his body. And they put guards at the entrance to stop anyone from coming in so that the place is secure. But when the women caught Ekromia, they knew they had to go to the grave. Yes. They knew they had to go. The, the apostles didn't want to go. To them it was a lost cause. But the women were driven. We just have to go. We just have to go. How are we going to roll the stone? I don't know. But we just have to go. It did not matter that there was an obstacle. There was something inside of them. It did not matter that the body of Jesus was already decomposing. There was something inside of them that was driving them. If you want to know God has spoken to you, distance will not stop you. Situations will not stop you. Amen. You'll be so determined. Amen. May I prophesy to somebody? Prophesy. That what God spoke to you will be, will be like fire in your bones. Yes. Now, now watch this. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. And came and rolled the stone from the door. And sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. It means he was a. And his remnant, remnant white as snow. When you enter into that realm, there are also angels that work with that same level of speed. They cannot go ahead of you unless you're already going. If there is no determination, they will not open what you're going after. Amen. Because when God reveals something, he also opens, he gives you tools. He sends help to make sure you get to that place. So if you don't go after, those who are supposed to open that door also won't do it. They will wait until the day you decide to go. There are angels positioned waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me talk to overflow. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me talk to overflow. Hallelujah. If you will be determined today yes. to go after what looks like doesn't make sense. Yes. If you will be driven today to chase after what looks like it's impossible. You will know the holy ones. The bright ones. The ones that flow like a chromia that will go ahead of you. Amen. That is when you get to somewhere you don't understand how things just turned. There are people who went that they operate in a twinkle of an eye. Amen. The Lord is calling you to do something. Become more alert of the flashes that come to you. Stop capturing what the devil is saying. Learn to capture what God is saying. Amen. 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 If it is a bad thought, you know it is the devil. 
When it's God, you question, is it me or is it God? What does it matter? It is good. Everything that is good and is of good report, put your mind on these things. But for you, if it is negative, you know it is Satan. If it is good, you start to question, is it me? <laughs> or is it God? You become like John. Are you the one? Or should we wait for another? If it entered your spirit without you thinking of it, it is God. Amen. 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 I just gave you a tip. Some of you didn't get it. If it comes to you without you conceiving it, God just spoke to you. Amen. If you don't hold on to it, you will lose it. I want you to stand. And you are going to pray. Are you here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. You're going to pray that God will help you not to miss the flashes of the Spirit. When His voice comes like lightning, when He reveals things to you with that speed that you'll be able to catch it, even if others don't catch it, it doesn't matter, you should catch it. Because God has spoken to you. God has shown you something. Don't be like those people that have to wait for... Mm -mm. If God has spoken, God has what? Spoken. Run with it. Do it prayerfully, but run. If you stay quiet... If you relax, another person will capture what God was saying to you. And they will do it and you say, oh, you know, I used to think about that. I should have done it. And you miss what God has set up for you. This is also the same way discernment looks like. Discernment doesn't come because you thought of something. Discernment happens on its own. But you will know that it is God. It will have nothing to do with your feelings. It will have nothing to do with the outward appearance. It will have nothing to do with what they did that raised the red flag. No. Because you have to remember this. There are genuine men and women of God that are immature. That they will do questionable things, but their calling is not questionable. It is authentic from God. I don't know if you heard what I said. They are highly anointed people, dangerously anointed people that are immature. Immature in their gifting and immature in God. But the calling is from God. They are not fake. They are just not seasoned. And there are people who are seasoned in what God has given them. But if you don't have that thing, you will not know who God chose. You will not even know what God has put in you. I want you to raise your hands to God. And you're going to pray. Father, let the flashes of the Spirit, that lightning that reveals the east to the west, what is hidden. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that I may see again. That my vision will be rekindled again. That I may become what you have called me to be. That I will not miss the promise that is at hand. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father.